Um, welcome to those connected to this ACA Zoom presentation, a little bit different than we, Grace and I are used to speaking at, um, but hopefully nevertheless you'll get a lot out of today. I'm so elated to be co-presenting today with Grace as we get the chance to geek out and present a topic today where those listening hopefully won't be glazing over like many a person has um, in the past when I discuss process and data. My entire career of over 15 years has been focused on process improvement and utilising data to make better decisions, initially in banking and over the last seven years in construction. The connected job site five years ago was something of a fable myth to me, but it's now quickly becoming a reality. I wish to introduce Grace Rera from DPR, who I've had the pleasure of working with since February this year, and who will be bringing a general contractor's perspective rather than a technologist's perspective as a provider um, on the topic at hand. Grace? Thanks, Brad. Hello, everyone. I'm Grace Herrera, and I'm, I too am excited to geek out and share with you the DPR EHS journey into visualizing data as we prepare for a more connected job site. My role as an EHS systems manager for DPR construction puts me right at the center of identifying technologies, as well as developing valuable reporting for all levels of the organization. While I admit my, mo my role is not an easy one, I truly believe it will take DPR construction to the next level of successful project management. And not an easy one is an understatement <laughs> from what I know you've been doing over at DPR, Grace. Before kicking into today's presentation, um, we do have a poll set up on the right-hand side of the screen, the top right-hand corner, I believe it is. Um, the topic today is, does your organization have a data strategy around EHS metrics? So if you can join in on that poll, it'll give us some great insights. So thank you very much. In my opinion, construction is where the banking industry was 10 years ago. The construction industry is quickly working through what to do with the sheer amount of data that we suddenly have on hand. With more and more data created each day on what seems like an exponential growth strategy, now more than ever, it's critical to generate a process and data strategy to help guide the direction or else risk being left behind. While we are in the infancy stage, there are already companies out there obtaining great benefits from the connected job site. A few examples of this being the digital twin space, machine learning and deep learning around production tracking and project management sequencing. These examples are helping push the envelope in the right direction. But when we look at the fundamentals of field operations, such as safety and quality, there is still a long way to go, both in the capturing of data and utilizing it. Hamatech operates across multiple regions globally. And so I get a chance to speak with many, many general contractors and people in the technology space about what are the problems today that we are facing. And these can be broken down into four categories. There are no industry baselines of standardization at a global level that we can all just tap into. These haven't been set up in the construction industry. Even at an industry country level, there are very few outside, a few key lag measurements such as fatality rates, but even then, the processes around capturing that and documenting it, other than OSHA, um, say here in North America, um, are non-standardised. Most companies have non-standardised safety and quality processes. If we put our hands on our hearts and, I guess, ask the question of not if our processes are documented in a standardised fashion in some Word document, but if our processes are applied in a standardised fashion on each job site, the answer would be, for the most part, no. For processes that are standardised, though, there are always gaps. This is something that only with great analytics, processes that have been digitised, and an iterative approach to process improvement that can be fixed. Last but not least, unlike reliable reports, I'm sure we've all faced those in our times. They cause chaos and people focusing on the wrong areas. Unreliable reports either come from the above mentioned, let's just say process gaps, or data problems, or report building errors. So there are many, many problems that we're all aware of today. Hopefully a few of you out there on this zoo, on this call are nodding out there that um, they're battling the same problems. If there's anyone out there that believes you've solved 100% of these issues, please reach out to me. I will pay for your flight and a dinner and a drink <laughs> and suck that information out of you. <laughs> but back to how do we address this situation? If you either are facing this situation or about to embark on the digitalization and mining of your field data, how should you approach this problem before it becomes a big problem? Whenever I asked about this, I always misquote Stephen Kofi 
and say start with the end in mind rather than begin with the end in mind. It just sounds better. It has been my go-to statement for the majority of my career. It's something that invokes a logical approach to problem solving, ensuring we don't get lost along the way and only find out at the end we've got a lot of work to do, thus greatly reducing the amount of rework required to finish with the result that you wanted. I know Grace, like me, believes in starting with the end in mind, which creates a perfect segue of handing over to Grace to discuss how DPR approaches performance improvement through data and processes. You hit the nail on the head, Brad. As organizations begin their journey in analyzing data as well as adopting new technologies, I've heard time and time again how they struggle with where to start. And throughout my career, I've continuously heard the horror stories about those hard lessons learned all due to the fact that they did not have the end in mind. Unfortunately, the focus tends to be the entry point and building out as many tabs as possible on a dashboard without ever stopping to ask two important questions. What problems are we trying to solve and what questions are we trying to answer? Keeping these desired outputs in mind will help you define your input and your dashboard metrics to, per, to ensure it's providing value across the whole organization. In the next few slides, I'm going to be sharing the DPR construction approach to EHS technology and data as we prepare for a more connected job site. Safety is a value at DPR construction and continuous improvement is critical to ensure that we're keeping a pulse on new opportunities to engage employees as well as our trade partners. Because of this focus on continuous improvement, our process includes many stakeholders. DPR construction is utilizing a three-step approach to identify gaps in our technology and our data. First, you need to define your problem statement and outline the questions you're trying to answer. Second, we go back to stakeholders and ask them what information would they like to have at their fingertips to help them solve their problems and answer their questions. During this step, do your best to start off with the clean slate. Try not to limit your discussions to only the data points you're currently collecting. Take this opportunity to learn what matters to your team. In the third step, you're gonna go back and take all the information you collected based off your conversation with stakeholders, and you will identify what you're already currently collecting and develop means of visualization. But most importantly, you will identify the gaps in your collection process. And in my opinion, it just creates awesome opportunity to go out and look for new technologies. As companies develop a strategy uh, data strategy, there are three things to keep in mind, and some of them seem obvious, but trust me on this, we've, I've learned some hard lessons over my career. The first, and it is the most critical, is to have consistent processes so we can provide consistent reporting across the organization. Consistent processes means consistent usage of each of your platforms. Now, while this step seems very obvious, it is not always included in the implementation and training strategies of your EHS platforms, or in fact, any platform for that matter. This step will ensure that you can provide consistent reporting across your organization. The next step is digitizing your paper processes, knowing that it's not always going to match up. In fact, in Brad's experience, <laughs> his comment was, it almost never match matches up. Not on the so, side. Right, it never matches up. So you want to make sure that you understand that as you digitize your paper processes, you are going to have to go back to your standard operating procedures and update them. The approach we're taking at DPR Construction as we take our paper processes and put them into the HammerTech platform, before we release the new form, the digitized version to all of our projects, we ask a few projects to beta test to ensure that it makes sense in a digital version. And last but not least, you're gonna hear this a lot today, as you're building out your inputs, always keep your desired output in mind. Sometimes a field in the input can seem redundant, but that field can be the filtering option that is most critical in your reporting. I can't tell you how many times I've had to go back and rework my input document just because we weren't able to filter something on a dashboard. Following these steps will allow you to develop a data strategy and most importantly, avoid the horror of reworking your digital forms over again and again. 
Now for the slides you've been waiting for. These next few slides are examples of what we've built so far for DPR construction leadership and project teams. This view is our overview tab for leaders within DPR construction. It provides insights into the adoption of HammerTech, our EHS platform, as well as other processes involving trade partners. Examples include worker orientation, the EHS submittal and inspection process. The EHS submittal process includes site-specific plans, JHAs, and SDSs. These metrics are generating meaningful conversations at DPR construction, not just around technology, but most importantly, around our processes. As I mentioned on the prior slide, participation and engagement in the orientation and safety submittal process is now visible to all levels of the organization. Now, our team members can now drill down to a project level and see high level results, which include participation percentages of our trade partners engagement in our EHS process. The next view will illustrate a more detailed view of trade partner engagement at a project level. We have now provided our project teams insights as to the participation of every trade partner on that project. It gives them the where to focus and more importantly, who to have conversations with. As you can see, we took time to build out the view that was appropriate for each audience. The project boards are more simplified and are very specific in scope compared to what we built out for leaders. Having access to this data for our project teams has the potential to impact productivity. We now have insight into pre-construction EHS requirements to ensure that we have a safer and more prepared trade partner team. It also allows us to ensure data governance at our job site. From an insurance perspective, we can now keep a pulse on required documentation to ensure it's in order in case of a loss. Thanks, Grace. Um, I, I guess I'm amazed at what DPR is putting together at the moment in terms of business intelligence and utilizing our reporting API. It's, it's great to see. As mentioned earlier on in my presentation, uh, in the introduction, my passion is process and data, and the connected job site is a perfect problem for me to work on at the moment in my career and one that I'm excited about working on for many more years to come. I, however, do not share the opinion of many articles and people that we are at there yet in the connected job site. While bridging the cyber physical world is well on its way, the industry as a whole is still in the infant stages. I think the best illustration that we are in the early stages is based on data itself. If you look at the amount of investment in this space over the last five years, you can tell the importance industry and investors are placing on the connected job site. Five years is a very short amount of time. And if you look at the failure rates of companies in this space, trying to make leaps and bounds in the connected job space, you can see that we are still very much trying to work out what's working, what's not. No one has the complete answer yet. While I believe that it's an important strat part of creating a truly job connected job site, requires R&D, purchasing and trialing of new technologies, the most critical part in the digitization is the digitization of your fundamental field processes, enabling data to be mined in an accurate structured way. Only then does a connected job site have the ability to enrich the processes and enable a true industry large scale change. Until that foundation is there, I believe we are only scratching the surface and the benefits that come with a connected job site. I'm gonna hand over to Grace now who'll be rounding out today's topic because 15 minutes goes really, really quick. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Brad. As we visualize more data, we've learned a few things. Data can validate our assumptions or dispel our assumptions. And as it dispels our assumptions, sometimes it's a nice surprise and sometimes it's a case of the ugly truth. And so there's a few things we need to keep in mind as we start visualizing our data. The first one is accepting and communicating that visualizing data creates transparency. At DPR Construction, we see this as a win. Now our project teams can know exactly where they stand and start working on developing a plan to where they need to be. The second step is the most critical, leadership support and understanding. We need leaders to know, to, to encourage teams to know where they stand and most importantly, support the plan for improvement. This will not work if leaders are using metrics in a punitive manner. 
And last but not least, as you continue your journey to a connected job site, always keep your focus on helping the project teams answer the questions and solve the problems. This will help you ensure that you're doing the, you're making the right selection of technologies. And most importantly, it will help you in defining the data for your dashboards. So there you have it. We've taken you down the DPR construction EHS journey to leveraging data and preparing for a more connected job site. These are three points that you can use as you begin your journey or as you continue your journey. The first is starting with the end in mind. Keep your focus on what your teams need. Try answering their questions and solving their pains. Your team will follow if they know you're working to help them. Know your audience. As you can see, when we design our dashboards for project teams and leaders, we found very quickly that each audience has different needs and also very different levels of proficiency when working with dashboards. We keep these things in mind to make sure we're providing relevant information by audience. And as the saying goes, crawl, walk, and run. As an EHS systems manager, I understand the sexiness of new technology and how it attracts all of our team members to, quite frankly, want to pilot all of it. However, at DPR Construction, we have a saying, if you're not keeping score, it's just practice. So before we go down the journey of adding new technologies, we must ask ourselves, how, does, how do the additional data points provide value to the project teams? And most importantly, how does it fit in with our fundamental EHS data? Rushing to get the coolest tech on the market may not be as successful if your teams do not have a good handle on how to use EHS data to drive improvement. And a personal message from me to you, you may not get it right the first time or even the second time, but you will learn what matters to each stakeholder as you go through this process. And with each conversation, you will discover what your organization needs to take the next step in continuous improvement. Thanks, Grace. Just want to repeat, crawl, walk, run. Very, very important in the current times. Everyone wants to run. On behalf of Grace and myself, I wish to thank all attendees for joining us today. I know we ran a little bit over, so sorry if that's kind of bumping into something else that you had planned. We hope you learned at least one thing today that you can take away and make a difference in your organization. If you have any questions, join me and Grace um, in the afternoon breakout or contact either Grace or I via email or LinkedIn. Uh, we both thank you and goodbye. Goodbye, everyone.